had that for two years. Nice. It was a good time. Nice. Nice. I think about two years was I think I kind of ruined all the bars for myself. I got out too many times, so I had to move on eventually to Vegas. But it was a good time. <laughs> nice. All right, let's get cracking. <clears throat> so, Roy Jones Jr., you're fighting again, or at least in an exhibition. First, before we get to anything, how, when, why, where did this all come from? It all came from Mike Tyson. Uh, Mike Tyson wanted to come out of retirement and do uh, an exhibition or whatever he could do. And of course, because of the age, not gonna probably let him do a real fight, so he wanna do an exhibition, which is close to a real fight as he can get. Um, with that being said, we did the exhibition. I mean, we agreed to exhibition, but he also wanted to do it with somebody who wasn't gonna bring a bunch of boxing people. But he told me he had tried a few other opponents, but they all had boxing promoters or boxing lawyers to uh, contact him right away. And it was a turnoff for him because he didn't wanna involve boxing people. His team wanted to make sure that he and I got the most for our our time and our event. So um, by putting it that way, that kind of took a lot of people out of the picture. And so when he called me, I understood it. Why is it, I know, I understand the age thing, right? But you fought until 2018. So why is it they wouldn't let you guys just have a professional bout? Why does it have to be an exhibition? There must be some places that would allow, would license you, right? I don't know. Um, I, I think there are probably a few places that would, but I really can't say so. When they called me, it's like for me to share the ring with Mike Tyson or anything, I wasn't going to say no. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, I mean, for me, I got to take it like it's a real fighter because it's Mike Tyson. Look how big Mike is. Look how powerful and explosive Mike still is. So for me, I'm not looking at it as like no exhibition. I'm glad it don't go on a record because you never know what might happen. But to get an <laughs> opportunity to share the ring with Mike Tyson, come on, bro. How do you think he's looking at it? Because, I mean, we've all seen the training footage, right? The guy set the, the fucking world on fire. How do you think he's viewing this? He looks at the same way. He want to be as red as he can be. He knows it's me. You know, I ain't coming in there just to give him nothing. And he ain't coming to give me nothing. So he knows exactly what it is. He said it best. Look, I only know one speed. That's all he knows. And I know that. So with me knowing that, I got to get ready just like he got to get ready. Do you, have you guys, like, finalized the rules yet? Is the headgear, what size are the gloves? What exactly have you got sorted out? All they told me so far were 12-ounce gloves. Uh, I don't think they'll be here again. I'm not sure, but I don't think it will be. But I do know 12 ounce gloves, and 12 ounce gloves to me are really you no know, different than 10 ounce gloves. So, I mean, especially when you I get guys that punch like we punch. I, I get the impression that they could come to you with sort of any rule set, and you'd be like, yeah, cool. As long as I'm in the ring with Mike, I don't really give a shit. That's what okay. I'm getting from you. And I think he's the same way. Is that just because you guys never got to do it back in your prime, or is that because you guys are friends? What is that? I mean, or is it just because you're both legends of the game? Why is it that you just want to get in that ring so bad? It's because we never got to do it in our prime. When I won the heavyweight title, I had one, one request as a heavyweight. I told Don King that, but I'll stay heavyweight if Mike Tyson will fight me. If Mike Tyson don't fight me, I got to go back to light heavy and finish my mission. So Mike Tyson said, no, I'm through with boxing right now. I'm not really fighting no more. So I said, okay, so I went back to light heavyweight. It's kind of a weird question, but if you could, everyone's talking about, oh, these guys, you know, they're past their prime and stuff, but you're still incredible athletes. And, if you could put a percentage of where you are in relation to where you were in your prime, how, how close do you think you are or how far away do you think you are right now? And then how will you be on fight night? I'm all about, oh, I got to be at least 75% right now. And on fight night, I should be 80%, at least 80%, maybe even 90%. Because the only thing I'm missing is, as you get older, you know, you, you got your chin gets a little risky because you've been through so much. Your legs go away a little bit because you've been through so much. But if you can rekindle that just for one night for eight rounds, you should be able to do this. I should be close to 100% come fight night. It's kind of cool, man. I, I've got to be honest. Anyone who's like being negative about this, I, I don't know what the hell they're smoking. I think this is a, a great thing, man. I, I I can't wait to see it. We got a coronavirus. People can't do anything. You know what I mean? No baseball, no basketball, no football, no nothing. I mean, people are trying, but it's very difficult. I just read a thing earlier today where eight new baseball players got coronavirus. So with that happening, they're probably going to stop it soon. Because they're steadily getting infected, you feel me? So yeah. it's like, with us being in the state that we're in right now, everybody is starving for entertainment. We need entertainment. These are the best two entertainers to grace the boxing ring probably over the last decade, two, three decades, especially since Muhammad Ali. Because the person you want to see was Muhammad Ali, then you want to see Mike Tyson and Roy Jones. That's where it was. You feel me? So it's yeah. like, you got two of these guys that you can put in the ring at the same time. Yeah, they're beyond 50, but they're still active. They still can move and do things. How could you not want to see what happens? 
It has to be something spectacular. They're the two biggest entertainers you've had in the last, like I say, four or five decades. <laughs> I love it. If we put on the analysis hat for a minute, how, how do you see the fight going when you guys were in your prime? And then how do you see it going now? Is it any different at all? And if there is, what are the differences? Same difference now as it was then. You got to get past the first two or three rounds. If you get past the first two or three rounds, the fight all, all of a sudden tilts in your favor. The first three rounds is tilted in his favor. After the three rounds, it's tilted in your favor. And the fact that they said eight rounds, I said, well, that's even better because if we went four rounds, three rounds is going to be tilted in his favor. I'm going to go have one round to shine. But if we go eight rounds, now three rounds is tilted in his favor. If I can survive them three rounds, now I got five rounds to shine. Now we're doing something. Do you think, is it true the, uh, the old adage is that power is the last thing to go? And if so, is he just still as big a threat as he was? He's even more of a threat now because he knows power's the last thing to go. He knows that legs are the first thing to go. And he knows that his legs aren't what they used to be either. So he wants to get, get it over with as quick as he can. Now, like I say, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited. For you, this is the last one ever, right? This is the only reason you're putting the gloves on again. That's a wrap. When Mike Tyson, I said no. But since it's Mike Tyson, I might do it. I got to do it. Do you think he'll go on? Do you think he'll fight again? Yeah, he might. I don't know. I don't know how he feels. This would tell everything. Do you think you've got a bit of an advantage because you boxed way past, you know, what's considered your career? And he and he he sort of hung up 15 years, showed no interest in returning, and then suddenly got this fire back. Do you think you have an advantage because you know sort of the difference between how you fast you were then and how fast you are now? No, he know he knows exactly what he's coming up against. He knows exactly what he's dealing with. Uh, it's like George Foreman. George Foreman took 10, 15 years off and his body rejuvenated itself. Made him better than he would have been had he stayed in boxing. So there's sometimes that break can help you. Uh, people thinking about how much it hurts. Well, look at George. George came back off for 10 or 12, maybe 15-year hiatus and became heavyweight champ again at 44 years old. So sometimes that break is good for you. It all depends on who you are and what you're doing. Now, as far as in terms of being eight-round fighter, I think it helped me in that sense because I went 10 rounds uh, in a shorter period than he has. He ain't been 10 rounds in a long time. That's why I say the longer the fight goes, the more the fight tilts in my favor because I've been the distance within the last two years. He ain't been the distance in probably 10 years. Awesome, man. Well, I'll let you go because I know you got some other stuff on, but I just think there was a famous yeah. word once said, y'all must have forgot. So anyone who's dissing this needs to shut the hell up. That's exactly right, because they must have forgot. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, you Cheers, man. All right. Bye-bye.